Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's turn, turn tragedy, tragedy to, to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choke. Hello, everyone. Um, Welcome to the Thriving Marriage Podcast. My name is Mark Johnston. This week's topic is dealing with hot and cold responses, hot and cold emotions. I imagine that many of you, as you are trying to patch together your relationship, you've probably seen some amount of um, back and forth or hot and cold responses more I'm, I'm dealing with, or I'm going to be talking about just the responses in general. Like, how do we deal with such extremes and, and responses? Um, I know a lot of you out there may not, you know, not everyone feels really comfortable navigating very emotional situations. And so I wanted to, to give you some ideas or some tips on how to, to approach this. So, uh We're going to skip some of the extras this week, and we're just going to dive right into the content. Um, Of course, if you have um, questions or if you're wanting extra help, put into the comments. Uh, We do look at this uh, afterward. As I mentioned, some of the I was dealing with some technical difficulties. Uh, One of them was I, I wasn't able to use the streaming platform that I chose where I could actually see comments. So I'm not going to be able to see it live here, um, which, you know, I usually like to respond to a lot of your comments. But anyways, what we're referring to is, like I said, these hot and cold responses. And I want to talk about what's causing these things. Very, very likely what you are seeing when you see your spouse be very, very cold or turn very hot, you're very likely dealing with um, more intense emotions. Um, You're also probably, it's mostly that. Now, there could be a lot of things playing into these sort of responses. And I do think that figuring out the motivation for the response is really key to understanding. You know, in some cases, you know, might ask, you know, do they, they simply want to be upset? I don't know if any of you ever experienced this. I, but sometimes there's just kind of this idea of like, I just want to be upset. It comes from like the sense that, you know, being upset is justified. If I let go of this, then I won't be heard. Or, it, you know, I want to feel right in my response. They deserve this sort of response from me. A lot of things like that. Um, and sometimes your partner might just need to, might want to feel upset. Uh, Perhaps they want to feel understood. Um, Sometimes, and especially more, well, actually in just any kind of response, maybe your spouse wants to feel heard or listened to. They want to feel like their feelings are validated, which can be a big thing uh, with any of these sort of responses. Uh, Maybe your spouse wants someone to reach out to them. They, uh, this I think is another extension of feeling, wanting to feel validated. If you reach out to them and they're heard and their feelings are justified, um, this is a good thing. Or maybe they, um, they want you to apologize. But like w- what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of different motivations for these responses. And there's too many to list here, essentially. Uh, all of you, I would hope, know, know your partner much better than I would. Uh, and so you need to ask yourself, okay, well, what is really motivating this response? What, because these responses are coming from somewhere. There is a motivation. There is a, an end goal, even if they are not aware of that. You know, I can think back to those times when I myself uh, have experience more intense emotions. And uh, I'll, I'll admit, I'm one of those that might 
um, be a bit more cold at times, or I'm, it might flip and I might have a bit of a temper. I, and I, I know that a lot, um, a lot of these motion, motivations have popped up at different points over the years. I, but in each of these cases, you know, I, I would say that because I'm, re, you know, in those moments, I'm because I was reacting to emotions I was feeling. I, I didn't really know what my motivation was. I didn't take time to think about it. I just knew that either I didn't want to talk or I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to speak to my wife because I was, I was upset or, um, you know, maybe I'm upset with my children and, and, you know, they deserve to be, to hear that what they're doing is wrong. And so I'm, you know, might be reacting in some amount of anger. While I'm saying that, when people are in the swing of their emotion, they might not um, understand their motivation. It's still a very important thing to help get further in these situations. Um, I want to talk a little bit about more specific responses. Uh, some of these cold responses or some of the hot responses, starting with the cold ones. So cold responses, what, what I mean by this, just in case it, um, I haven't made this clear, Cold responses are going to look like distancing, avoiding conversation. They might be shorter or strained conversations or communication. It might look like walls or boundaries. I know um, many clients that I work with are dealing with silent treatment where their spouse won't say anything, sometimes even for days. Uh, perhaps it is like this uh, passive aggressiveness um, sort of situation. Or it might be that uh, your spouse agrees to something that you, you say, and then they don't really mean it. This is still a, a way of avoiding, and I still think that this is a bit of a, a colder response. Uh, what tends to motivate these kind of responses is there is a, an amount of avoidance of discomfort. Um, they the people who are typically putting out these cold responses are not going to be confronting things themselves, but they, there's a, a strong sense of discomfort or resistance to taking the first step. Uh, this could be coming from, you know, a sense of justice or rightness, rightness, uh, such as I shouldn't have to be the first one to apologize, or it might come about from self-preservation or protection as in confronting the problem will be uncomfortable. Uh, you, they might perceive that you are going to get angry with them. They might perceive that you're not going to listen to them uh, or that uh, it's not going to do any good. So they just don't talk at all. Uh, initially, I had planned out having someone to, to talk about this on the podcast with me. Um, I had some people fall back, but I wanted to just kind of examine where I see these cold responses. Um, you know, my wife is, oh, has been on the podcast a little bit more recently. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about with her was this sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, without her to bounce some ideas off of, I'll just I'll instead be very open myself. And I'll say that I, I myself tend to um, to lean in this direction. Uh, not always, but uh, this is more my go-to uh, in terms of cold responses. If I'm reacting emotionally, uh, to help you to help you to see kind of the inner workings of something like this, in case this is not you, uh, I'll often, uh, if I'm upset, I'll often try to justify my behavior. I'll say, I'm almost always the one to take the first move. I'm almost always the, the one to, to apologize first. I'm not gonna say the first thing, even though these statements might not be entirely accurate. Uh, so there, there is a bit of that sense of justice or rightness. I'm not gonna do this. Um, there's a sense of wanting to feel validated. Uh, and for me personally, wanting to, to feel as though my emotions are okay, that it's, there's some understanding, like it's, 
it makes sense that I might have reacted the way that I did. And I just want someone to reach out and say that. Um, I might not say it outright because I, you know, some sen some part of me recognizes, might recognize that I don't want to fight about this. I don't want to have to defend myself. I just want someone to feel understanding and validate my concerns. And so if I'm leaning more in that cold direction, this is oftentimes a lot of things that are going through my head. And I wonder if any of you identify with this side of things, or if any of you see your partner do these kind of things where they turn cold, they have some perceived slight that they're holding on to that you need to respond to, but they won't respond to you. Uh, what's generally helped my wife and I to get past these kind of responses, I, I can even, you know, my wife and I, we don't have frequent arguments, but I can remember one some time ago where I was feeling this way. And, you know, I, I think on that day, we, we just had extra stress, um, less sleep. You know, with young kids, sometimes they can be very <laughs> cranky and it, that just ramps the stress level up. Uh, and I can't even remember what I was upset about, but I just wanted my wife to, to get why I was upset. I didn't want to have to go to her and get her to, um, to try and understand me. I didn't want to have to explain myself. I just wanted my wife to understand me. And I recognize that wasn't really a logical way to approach this. But what helped me get out of that funk was um, my wife approaching and wanting to validate my concerns. She wanted to, she apologized. Um, she wasn't entirely sure what she was apologizing for, but uh, we were able to get past that. And I, like I said, I'm, I recognize in that moment, I was not responding well. Uh, I was responding with these cold, uh, avoidant sort of actions. Um, and it took some very, you know, some warmer responses to, to thaw me out a bit. Uh, and the same, you know, I'm, I'm glad to say that I, I provide the same sort of, um, I wouldn't call it service, but you know, the support uh, for my wife at times. Perhaps she won't be speaking what she's feeling. She, perhaps she won't be expressing uh, some of her frustrations. Um, and as I approach and try to get her to, to speak up or to, um, to really validate that things, hey, things are, are hard, it's, it's understandable, it's okay. She tends to come out of that. Now this, interestingly enough, um, a lot of the motivations uh, for these cold responses are similar to the hot responses that you might see. The hot responses are gonna be different in that you're gonna see more arguing, yelling, challenging, confronting, more, uh, uh, more of a stronger outward uh, uh, sort of expression of emotions. And this is really the, the only big difference here. I, I see that the cold responses and the hot responses have a lot of the times the, the same sort of fuel. It's just more of a, is it an outward response or an inward response? Am I turning into myself or am I pushing all that outward? So and at times there might be a, a need, uh, a, a sense of justice or rightness, as in, I'm not gonna let them do this to me. I'm not gonna let them do this to someone else. Um, I'm going to deal with this problem. I'm not going to stand by and sit idly by while people do nothing. And you see, it's like, um, it, it might even be the same motivations, that self-preservation or protection, as in, uh, I'm going to protect myself and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out the first punch, so to speak. Or maybe it's, um, you know, a sense of solving problems, like instead of saying, I'm going to sit back and I want someone to solve it for me, like I'm going to take care of this myself. But if you listen to this, 
many of the motivations are very similar. And as I said, it's just uh, whether your partner tends to internalize that or push it outward. Uh, and in many cases, you know, just like I was explaining with the cold responses, I, there is still a need to have some amount of validation and some understanding to get much of anywhere. I, I myself, uh, as I mentioned, there are sometimes when my responses are a bit more hot, um, sometimes when it's a bit more cold, I, I do tend to lean towards the, those colder responses. But you know, where I see hot responses in my life, um, you know, for me myself, I, I tend to see this as, you know, I, I push down some of these emotions until it all erupts you might see that in your partner, especially if they have more cold responses. Eventually that, that resentment bubbles over and it will um, explode out. Though perhaps if your partner is more consistently hot, uh, you're gonna, you might see this a lot more, um, more frequently that challenging aspect of things. Uh, wh where I see this more, uh, it tends to be in people who are feeling very hurt. Uh, it tends to be in people who are um, feeling that they need to correct problems, that they themselves need to, to be the one that is solving things, um, still reacting to emotion. I can recall one time quite some time ago uh, responding to a very, very angry um, potential client. This is all, many years ago before I had my own business here. Uh, when I was uh, doing some intake interviews and um, because of certain rules that the facility has working at, we had to, to turn away an individual um, until the next day. And the the mother was the one that had brought this in, this person in and the mother became very hot, uh, as in became very upset, started yelling. And we can see some of these motivations here. There's a sense of injustice, a sense of a need to protect, um, needing to solve the problems on her own. Uh, otherwise her, her daughter might be in trouble. And in that case, uh, there was some uh, ability on my end to hear her out and to validate some of her concerns. And we were able to get past this response. And this is uh, the key, the key in this moment, the key in when my wife supports me or when I support her. Uh, the key is being able to not react to your own emotions in these times. Um, so, I mean, if you're spouse is acting very cold towards you, if they aren't speaking to, towards you, it's not gonna really do you any good to respond angrily or to be distant, you know, very distant yourself because you are feeling upset. Now this is different from say, consciously choosing to give some space. Um, that's a very different response. But if you are reacting and saying, fine, if this person isn't gonna talk to me, my, if my partner's not gonna talk to me, I'm not gonna talk to them. Or if you're saying, they're not gonna to talk to me, I'm gonna let them have a piece of my mind. This is the, the problem with these responses in general. Your partner is reacting emotionally. And if you react emotionally in kind, this is gonna be a situation that's going to escalate. It's going to turn into a bigger problem potentially. And so, you know, some, some tips, some thoughts on that is, you know, you might need to take a break from the emotional situation yourself until you can calm down. Take time to examine your goals and question whether you're working towards that goal. Are you saying, I'm trying to calm the situation down. I'm trying to understand my spouse. I am trying to uh, resolve some problems. I am trying to have a better, more, uh, have more effective communication. I, I'm trying to grow closer to my spouse. 
And you need to examine that goal and ask yourself, is my response getting me there? Quite often, if you have taken the time to examine your goals and you are reacting emotionally, very likely you are not getting closer to that, that goal. Uh, some things that can really help uh, with this and not reacting emotionally is having I mean, making sure that you are have some, on the one hand, confidence in your state, as in knowing what you, you know, knowing what you are doing in the situation and being confident in your own motivations and intents. Quite often, I will see a hot, uh, you know, one of these really emotional responses from a partner and my client might fold. They might uh, give in too much. The, the partner might say, you're never there for me. And there's just kind of this trying and we're like, oh, you know, like I'm where they start to lose confidence in their own state, which then, you know, can lead to the drawing in or uh, pushing back out, um, you know, it leads to that emotional response. If you are confident in your own motivations and intents, it really helps you to move past some of these emotions. Now, this doesn't mean that you aren't willing to receive feedback. Um, and that's where the balance is, where you have to have confidence in your own state and being willing to hear someone else out. I'll say an expert in this is, is my wife, Jennifer, where, uh, you know, when I'm not, <laughs> this is what how everyone does, goes when they're they're feeling a bit emotional when they're stressed. I might say, "Hey, uh, you know, I don't. I, I need. I, I might complain to her and say, "Hey, you haven't been there for me. You haven't. You haven't done this for me, or whatever it might be. Whatever the complaint is." And my wife will very confidently say, "That is not quite. That, that's not correct. I've been here, here. I've been supporting you here, 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 and here." But then she turns that and says, is willing to receive feedback. But she says, I can see that you need some support now. And I would, you know, I'd like to hear that. Here's some confidence saying, this is how it actually is on my end. Let's hear, let's hear some, uh, let's talk about the kind of support that you're looking for. And this, you know, if you can balance that, that confidence and the ability to receive feedback, the ability to validate some of the other person's emotions. In many cases, this is how, um, how you can avoid some of that emotional reaction yourself and how you can move past these emotional reactions from your spouse. Now, fortunately, we actually have uh, an, a, an expert on our team on dealing with uh, your own emotions, being able to help in a healthy way, manage those emotions and uh, be more mindful of your responses. In the coming months, we're actually going to be doing regular workshops, um, low cost workshops on specific skills and tools. And this is going to be the one, one of the ones coming up. Uh, we're going to probably be having this particular one uh, sometime either in late January or in, in February. So, and then sometime in the next couple of months, we, of course, we, holidays are coming up and, you know, we're going to be a bit busy with that, but we'll be rolling these sort of things out after the break. So I hope this discussion was helpful, at least in, <laughs> even with some of the setbacks that we had. Uh, if you have some questions, please put it in the comments. I'd love to uh, take a look at this a little bit later today. And, and respond to some of you. If you're needing a little bit of extra help, also put it in the comments. We would love to hear from you and see um, how we might be able to support you better. With that, thank you all for listening and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on.